Awesome. So let's get back to confirmatory fact analysis and we are going to go through some basic exercises. Here we have a visual representation of a confirmatory factor analysis model with two latent variables and seven observed indicators. So this is obviously a visual representation but if we want to test something like this we have to tell our program, in our case R, how to actually put items in relationship with latent variables. And in R there are a couple of notations. So here are the basic notation features. So we have the, the theoretical relationship. So for example if we want to define a latent variable we can use an equal sign and this little wavy bit um, called tilde. So that's the operator. And this could basically be read as variable 1 is measured by observed indicator 1, for example. Then we could, for example, specify a regression relationship. This is typically expressed through this little wavy bit called tilde and then we would just say variable x is regressed on variable y. We might have residual or covariances or variances in general. They are expressed through these kind of uh, two tilts together and we would say construct x is correlated with construct y. And finally we may want to specify an intercept so we want to include uh, a baseline, we want to estimate the baseline for a specific variable. In that case we have a tilt with a 1 and we would say this captures the intercept. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. If we want to write in a regression we could say y is regressed on x1, x2 and x3. So if we wanted to represent this visually we could draw something like this. So our variable y is predicted by x1, x2, x3. So as you can see y is regressed on tilde on x1 plus x2 plus x3. Yeah, so far pretty simple. That's a classic multiple regression model and you probably are quite familiar with that because that was also part of your take-home exercise. We could also specifi specify something like this y1 plus y2 tilde x1 plus x2 plus x3. What does that mean? That basically means we have two dependent variables and instead of writing two separate regressions we put it all into one single model and then it would look like this right so we have one dependent variable y1 and we have a second dependent variable y2 and both of them are regressed on x1 x2 and x3 yeah so that's a convenient way to specify more than one dependent variable that is um, dependent or on or regressed on a number of common independent variables. So now a little challenge for you. Draw this one. If you want try and draw each line individually first and then try and see if you can put them all together. Try this and then I will post the responses on your, um, I will post the responses uh, later on tomorrow, right? So try and do this and see whether you can draw this model. So check tomorrow and see whether what you drew is actually correct or not. But let's move on. If we want to specify variances or covariances, we would typically have y1 tilt tilt y2 or f1 tilt tilt f2. So this would 
visually be represented something like this. Sometimes we would have curved double-headed arrows. And we could, of course, then also put all of this stuff together. So we could have, for example, a regression model with correlated errors. So here's another little exercise for you. Try and draw this model and I will post the responses tomorrow. And here, oops, there is some strange W in the background. Not sure what happened there. Um, but here is our initial confirmatory factor model again. So if we wanted to draw this one, it would look something like this. So F1 is uh, causally related to or is defined by item 1, item 2, item 3 and item 4 and our latent factor 2 is defined by item 5, item 6 and item 7. 